Welcome to Society Girl Saves the World and uh, today we will be discussing a film from 1981 by the name of Zehrila Dushman. The film was initially intended just to be Zehrila because uh, the records that were released before the film was released uh, suggested that the name Dushman was not yet associated with this film but by the time it came out to hit screens it was called Zehrila Dushman. The film's cast is impressive, one featuring Sultan Rahi, Najma Aurangzeb, Parveen Bobby, Fauzia Durani Shah Nawaz, Kamal Irani, Bahar Ilyas Kashmiri, Munir Zarif and Jahangir Mughal, well known as a fight master and a stuntsman. The director was Ilyas Ahmad even though Jahangir Mughal was really the man calling the shots. <laughs> favorite genre of Pakistani cinema is the black and white gritty sleazy urban based thriller which invariably features shady villains in wild outfits running dens of debauchery <laughs> These films focus typically on the dubious happenings of the kilab. It's a sordid hole where women of loose morals ply their trade wearing fabulous weaves and equally mesmerizing dance moves. The music sizzles and the local dons are belligerent, bellicose and very, very danger. Ajda Badmash, Nawab Zada, Khan Zada, Khatarnak, Khofnak, Malik Zada, Pindiwal, Gherat and club dancer are just some names that spring to mind as delectable slices of Lollywood from a bygone and brilliant era, the early to mid 70s pretty much. Club dancers of the highest caliber, Anita, Parveen Bobby, Ishra Chaudhary, Noreen, Noroz, Nazli, Amrozia, Mizla and others are often captivating audiences at these fabulous clubs and often the films are unappreciated gems. The snobbish, educated class rarely watch such movies. They would never indulge in such unfiltered sleaze, much to their loss. In the local dialect, these films are often referred to as sexy type and were considerable money spinners in the early to mid-70s. Khatarnak broke all sorts of box office records during its historic Diamond Jubilee run. But the party days and saucy nights were abruptly cut short with the arrival of the morally upright code ushered in by the new and latest military dictatorship. The sinful ways of the past are now set to be erased and a new order ready to be politely thrust down people's throats. The truth is, in many ways, people are very adaptable and life went on much the same way as it did before. It was business as usual in many ways. Filmmakers learned how to give the public the masala they yearned for, especially with the clever invention of the skin-coloured bodysuit and a whole lot of lycra. While the general and his family enjoyed Bollywood movies on VCR at home, many sexy type films had their censor certificate withdrawn while others ground to a halt and didn't make it to the finish line at all. Zehrila Dushman, released in 1981, breathes the same air as the films mentioned above and contains many ingredients to elevate it to a level of the finest saucy masala epics. 
Yet it fails to fly. The masala and sleaze factor is toned down to make way for a stunt and fight based revenge thriller, but it lacks any oomph element, and the fights, though initially amusing, do get more than redundant after a short viewing time. The production values are absurdly low right from the very opening scene and continue to astound with dreadful car chases, embarrassing sets, and incredibly shoddy technical skills. The story is equally threadbare, with some typical and stale formulas being thrown into the script to keep it from stalling completely. Yet nothing works and the film finds itself running around in circles and getting nowhere. Noted stuntman and fight master Jahangir Mughal is the brains behind this production and he also plays the role of Salim, who turns into Peter and then back to Salim once again. His fighting skills are inspired by the finest B-grade kung fu films of the early 70s, but with a local twist, and the sound effects take matters to a surreal level of madness. It is all quite brilliant for a while, but it gets a little laborious by the umpteenth fight scene, especially when the film has a plot devised by a buffoon. The excellent background score and the title theme music are perhaps the only things that stand out from the pretty turgid experience. Sadly, none of the songs or club dances are particularly memorable. The background score fizzes and pops along to chase scenes and cranks out a uniquely 70s urban Punjabi masala funk vibe. Besides that, Ilyas Kashmiri's phenomenal majestic flower power hate Ashbury wig and his bad ombre look are a joy to behold. He cuts quite a swagger and his eye-popping get-up sets the tone visually. The background score and sound effects keep the film from drowning a miserable death within minutes, but it's really just a matter of time. By 1981, the VCR had arrived and families no longer thronging cinemas, which meant that the cinemas were now left to pretty much an all-male audience who didn't have the means to watch films at home or they were labourers with time on their hands and far from their families. Alas, even the sheer awfulness of this deranged mess of a movie couldn't gel. No surprise at all that Zahrila Dushman bombed in cinemas barely lasting a week. If only Mustafa Qureshi had played the main villain's role and the whole club's villain vibe thrown in, things could have worked out. But it wasn't to be. Later, when reissued on the strength of Sultan Rahi's rising star, the film sank faster than the Titanic. The lobby cards and stills promised a fabulous B-grade epic, but what materializes is utterly putrid. Endless, poorly filmed chase scenes and preposterous yet mildly amusing stunt fight scenarios, along with some bland emotional filler and uninspired dances, with tepid direction the movie falters very seriously. There is also a tedious comic story with a man attempting a pale imitation of Munawar Zarif but lacking his skills entirely. 
By the conclusion, the audience is uninvolved in any of the hastily manufactured threads of the storyline. Sacrifices are made, families reunited, Peter exorcised from being Salim in a touching redemption scene. Perhaps director Mughal lacked a sense of courage in his ability to steer the film clearly in his direction. Or maybe his producers felt he didn't possess the ability to deliver results at the box office. Perhaps if he had taken the film over, it might have worked. Sultan Rahi looks young in some scenes but quite flabby in others, suggesting that the film had to be plastered together after a butchering from the Ziaul Haq censor board. The film does have some positives though. The fight scenes are insane and the background score sizzles even if the songs do not. The film has a wonderfully overexposed and scuzzy look and feel. But it would have worked much better if it had been stripped down to the trashy chase and fight scenes, featuring the fantastic score and action alone. <laughs> It has a tragically cheap look to the experience that almost grows on you. From the very opening scene when each of the henchmen is carrying empty cardboard boxes to the epic fire scene at the climax. Shockingly and delightfully and shamelessly atrocious but with a charm of its own. But the fact is the other films have done this type of thing with far superior execution and alas Zehrila Dushman isn't worth your time. And that brings us to the end of another review here on Society Girl Saves the World and DesiMovies.biz. Thank you for tuning in once more and hopefully you'll be back for more of the same in times to come. And until then, please stay safe and try to stay sane as well. Bye-bye.